So welcome to the last part of lecture 14. Uh, in this last part, I want to kind of revisit the fundamental theorem of algebra, which we just talked about when all the coefficients are inside of the complex numbers. And so we have this nice result, the fundamental theorem of algebra. So the question is, what if you replace the complex numbers by the real numbers? Okay, so it leads to this question of if P is a polynomial, which is real coefficients, how much can we factor it, provided that we were, uh, want all of our polynomials in which we factor it to also have real coefficients? Okay. And so the, we can get pretty close, but we can't factor it all the way into linear forms. And the example that I had at the bottom shows that this is not always possible. Here's a polynomial, which I can't break up into smaller pieces. Okay, so first of all, we need a little result, and this should look familiar. You have the polynomial x squared plus bx plus c can be factored into a polynomial with two polynomials of degree 1 if and only if b squared minus 4c is greater than or equal to 0. And of course, you know this from high school. You call this the discriminant, right? So the discriminant from high school. So we know exactly when we can take a polynomial degree two and break it into two polynomials of degree one. Okay. Now using this information, what the next theorem is, is basically, oops, I need to make sure I put the real correct field here. It, the next theorem here basically tells us what happens if we look at uh, an analog of the fundamental theorem of algebra for the real numbers. And the, what it says is we can almost factor things up uh, to linear forms. What we get is a product of linear forms and a product of quadratic forms. Okay, so suppose that P is a non-constant polynomial, then P has a unique factorization up to order where we have a whole bunch of uh, linear terms where each of the AIs are real numbers, and then a whole bunch of quadratic terms where each of these quadratic terms can, can't be factored any further. And I, these should be all pluses here. Okay, These quadratic terms all satisfy the property that bi squared minus 4ci is less than zero. So these terms can't be factored. So the C, the A1s, the Bs, and the Cs, they're all real numbers. And this is how much you can break down your polynomial. Okay, So that is P can be factored into degree 1 and degree 2 terms if we have restrict to being in the real numbers. And I'll just give you a quick idea of the proof. You can see the proof in the text, textbook, but there's some steps that you need to prove. The first thing that you need is the following fact, that if you take a complex number, and if you take a polynomial whose coefficients are real numbers, and if the complex number is a root of that polynomial with real coefficients, then the complex conjugate is also a root. Okay, so the conjugate, conju, conjugate is also a root of the polynomial. So it's very important to notice though that P has to have all real coefficients for this to work. So how does the proof work? Well, you have your polynomial. Its coefficients are all in R, so they also belong to C. So by the fundamental theorem, you can break it up, you can factor it into a product of linear forms. Now, some of them are going to be real roots, and some of them are going to be complex. So what you do is you kind of break them into pieces, right? So these guys all have the real roots. And these guys here all have all the complex roots. We put them at the end, so all the complex roots. But now by the following fact, these complex roots have to com come in complex conjugate pairs. So if lambda 1 is a root, then the conjugate of lambda 1 also has to be among these polynomials right down on the right-hand side here. So we can, we can group them by complex conjugates. Okay, so then maybe I'll put this right here. So they come in conjugate pairs by the fact above. Okay, so they come in conjugate pairs. And so you can group them all together. So you can have Z minus lambda 1 
times z minus the conjugate of, lam of lambda 1. And you do this for all the pairs. So yeah, you would have m and then z minus the conjugate of lambda 1, lambda m. So we've broken it up and then we group things together using the fact. And then what we want to do is kind of investigate a little bit. Well, what does it mean when we take a number, a complex number, and we look at z minus lambda times z minus its conjugate? Well, you can expand it out. And what you get is a polynomial of the form z squared minus 2 times the real part of lambda times z plus the, the absolute value of lambda squared. And notice that this guy here, This is in the set of all polynomials with real coefficients because this term and this term are real numbers. And there's another fact that you can prove is that two times the real part of, uh, of uh, lambda here squared minus four times not uh, four times the lambda squared is less than or equal to zero. So you can take the polynomial that I had on the previous slide and you can use this fact to combine all of those uh, linear terms with complex coefficients and you can make them all have real coefficients. So you, you combine them up and you get z squared minus 2 times the real part of lambda 1 times z plus uh, the real part of lambda 1 squared, uh, sorry, the, the length of lambda 1 squared, and you do this for all the terms. So you get z squared to real part of lambda uh, n times z plus the real part of lambda n squared. And so there you have actually the kind of the idea of the proof, because now we've written as p as a product of linear forms, and then p times a product of quadratic forms, where all the coefficients are uh, inside of the real numbers. So that's the rough idea of the proof. I mean, you should check all the, all the details yourself, but that's really how things work. And just want to point out is that you, you can get some nice corollaries from this. Probably the nicest one is this following result, is that if you have a polynomial of odd degree, then P has to have a real root. Okay, and you may have seen this in calculus, but here's another way to see it, is you have your polynomial and you can factor it in, in terms of linear forms and quadratic forms. So the degree of this polynomial is the number of linear forms plus two times the number of uh, forms of this quadratic forms. And since the degree of pz is odd, so this part is even, we know that m is odd, then m is odd, so m is greater than or equal to 1, so that means that you have at least one term over here. So z minus a1 is a factor, i.e. a1 is a root. Because without the m being odd, it could be the possibility that m is 0. That we, If we allow m to be uh, even, it could be that it leads to the possibility that these are all 0, so we don't have any roots. But when m is odd, then we know, or sorry, when the degree is odd, we know that m has to be at least 1, so we have at least one such term. Okay, so I know this was a very fast crash course through some of the key ideas uh, of polynomials. Um, so I hope you got something out of it. Take a look at chapter four. Some of the main things that you should take away from today are polynomials, the division algorithm for polynomials, and you should also notice that there's a big difference between factoring over the complex numbers and the real numbers. So in particular, or factoring over the complex numbers, we can factor into products of linear forms or linear polynomials. And for factoring over uh, the real numbers, we can factor into polynomials of degree one and degree two. And if you're interested in this sort of stuff, we dive into some of the details and the proofs in Math 3GR3, which is the abstract algebra course at McMaster.
So I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Um, if you're following this course in sequence during 2021, uh, the next lecture is the our next lecture is going to be the midterm, midterm one, and then we have our reading break. So uh, let me just uh, say, have a good reading week. Okay. So after you finish your exam. Okay, I hope you have a good reading week. And I'll see you uh, when we come back after the break.